we'd read Bread and Jam for Francis, and we would have these long conversations about, about the lunch that, that Francis's friend Arthur brought to school and all the detailed you know, things he was pulling out of his lunch bag and about whether we like bread and jam as much and about situations where we had too much of the same thing. Like we could identify for, for weeks afterwards with Francis and her bread and jam situation and relate our lives to it um, and have these really rich interaction with the narrative stories we were reading. But when we came to looking at the, the shapes books, it was triangles, squares, rectangles. There was nothing left for us to talk about or relate to our lives other than maybe noticing that the, the window over here is the shape of a rectangle. So I knew that I wanted there to be better shapes books in the world, but I didn't really have any idea what that would look like. Then I just had an idea one night. I thought, wow, what if we did that with shapes? And what if the shapes, what if it started out simply and became more complex and more rich and more sophisticated as you went through several sets? So it wasn't just one set to start off class, but a, an interconnected series of which one doesn't belong sets. That'd be a really fun shape book. I wish that shape book existed. I spent the next day asking my Twitter friends to imagine a shape in their head and to describe it to, to me with four characteristics. Um, and then I was taking the characteristics that they had and cr eliminating the first one and creating a shape that had these three and eliminating this one and creating a shape that had these three. So using other people's ideas about shapes, sort of shapes they were picturing in their mind and properties they were attending to, to create these which one doesn't belong sets. And there's still a couple of sets from that original day that still linger. The heart page um, is from uh, a colleague of mine in Minnesota, Megan Schmidt. I've also structured a number of the pages around things that I know elementary teachers have to teach. So there's a page I think of as the polygon page towards the end that has lots of things that kids can attend to, but I also know that the underlying structure that a teacher can pull out of there for sure is that there's only one polygon and that there are for three important characteristics for being a polygon. Um, and so each one of the other shapes is missing one of those characteristics. So the purpose I originally had in mind was that idea of when I had a four, five, six year old in the house and we were sitting down to look at a shapes book on the couch, we had crummy shapes books. And when we were looking at narrative stories, we had beautiful stories. And so I want, as a parent, I want there to be a better book a better shapes book, one that's rich and that challenges my kids' minds in the same way that the stories we're reading do. That's one purpose. And then the other purpose is thinking about elementary geometry instruction, which um, frankly has far too much on average in this country, far too much time, just like the shapes book, far too much time spent naming shapes. And so I go into classrooms and see sort of some standard sets of posters and on the wall will be, you know, squares and a poster of rectangles and another one of triangles. And the triangles are almost always with one horizontal side, um, one side horizontal, um, more than average. On average, they are uh, equilateral triangles or right triangles are all sort of special in some way. And there's never a square on the, on the rectangle poster. And so a lot of the instruction happens at elementary school happens in ways because we don't provide the kinds of rich resources for teachers and for students to interact with. When kids open up and see that heart page, there's, there's that moment of, oh, wow, this is going to be fun.